How's it going guys, I'm your host Carbon Gaming. welcome back to a very special Adventure Quest video and for today's video, I'm going to be going through with you guys 10 strong but easy to get items inside of the game. And by easy to get, I mean that these items are going to cost gold, they are going to be available all year round, they do not come from any of the token packages and last but not least, they are not going to come from any of the golden gift boxes. So the information inside of this video is accurate at the time of this recording which is on 5th January 2022. The time at which you may be seeing this video may be days, weeks, months or years down the road. So the information may or may not uh, be outdated Okay, depending on whether the staff updates the game or not since this game does get weekly updates and these items are strong almost to the point of being overpowered. Some are overpowered and broken by the Way. they are eventually going to get a nerf so hopefully this video doesn't get outdated too soon all right but without further ado let us jump right into the video Starting off the list, we have Book of Burns. This is quite possibly one of the most broken items inside of the entire game. And I know this is going to be a controversial first option, simply because some people are going to think that this is not exactly an easy item to get, but I'll give you guys more tips on how to beat the fight later on. Okay, so in order to get the item, we want to go to Guardian Tower, head on inside, go to Guardian Nimrod, click on Quests, click on Arena of Enthusiasts, continue versus staff and do the challenge gauntlet so it's basically a gauntlet fight of three boss monsters without healing and if you guys are struggling with this challenge gauntlet not to worry i have a video showing how i beat the gauntlet the link to the video will be in the top right corner of the screen right now using completely free to play items the only thing you need is guardianship obviously you need to be a guardian to even access this quest in the first place but yeah all need is guardian no other pay to win items seasonal items are needed in order to beat the gauntlet there are 101 ways to beat the gauntlet but in my opinion the one that i showcase is probably the most accessible way for those of you guys who do not have a uh, strong op or rare item so go ahead and check that out if you're struggling with it so once you beat the gauntlet you'll unlock a shop that allows you to buy the weapon now let us showcase how good this item is and i'll explain in more detail why it is broken all right so this is your standard like tome uh, I weapon inside of the game. It comes with six different options. The first one is a standard fire spell. Second one is a weaker fire spell that inflicts burn on your foe. You can stack this on your, f uh, you can stack the burn to a ridiculous amount to inflict a lot of damage. But that's not why it's broken. Next one is fire shield. It's basically a mana shield, so most of the enemy's damage will be directed to your mana if you cast this. Next one, Stoke the Flames. This is where the brokenness comes in. Okay, so by skipping a turn, you can gain fifteen fire charges. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how this works. So I stoke the flames for one turn and I gain 15 fire charges. If I do it for another turn, I'll gain 30. And you can do this against any monster. Most people like to do this against combat practice trainer because it's the easiest and most straightforward way to do it without dying. So you can just keep doing this and there is no limit on how many charges you can store. That's right guys, you heard me right. Absolutely no limit on how many charges you can store. You can go up to 20, 30,000, even 100,000 charges. It'll let you store as many charges as you have the patience to charge it for. Are you seeing where I'm going with this? Alright. Next skill, Kindle. This one regenerates your MP, nothing broken here. But last skill, Multicast. This is where the broken synergy come in. Remember Stoke the Flames? You can gain 15 charges by skipping a turn and you can build out an unlimited number of charges. Yeah, Multicast, what it does is it gives you another turn after using a spell inside of this tome. So if I toggle on Multicast and then I cast a spell like Big Blaze, it gives me another turn. And if I have an unlimited number of charges, I can get an unlimited number of turns, which means I can one-shot literally any monster inside of the game before they even get a turn. That's right, guys. You heard me right. That is how freaking broken this is. No limit. And yeah, you can charge this against Combat Practice Trainer. 20,000 charges. Hit into any battle, any challenge gauntlet, any big boss, and just one-shot them with this. As long as they have, you know, at least... Uh, some weakness to fire. The sky is the limit, guys. And I've actually used this strategy to beat the unbeatable, supposedly unbeatable level 300 Karnak. So the last time somebody did this was, uh, I believe, with the Artix bug, whereby you used Artix, whereby you play as Artix in one of the quests, and then you were able to escape from the quest while still being while still playing as Artix. And somebody used Artix to kill Karnak. But yeah, this is another method of killing Karnak, and that's by using Book of Burns. As long as you survive Karnak's first hit, and if you have enough charges built up through Book of Burns, you can one-shot Karnak. 
That's how crazy it is. Okay, so I'll link the video of me beating Carnex using the Book of Burns in the top right corner of the screen right now. Now, obviously, this item is meant for mages. So if you're not a mage build, then this item is not going to be for you. Second item on the list that we are going to be talking about is the Kindred Armor. So if you guys have noticed from the first item, the Book of Burns, I am actually using this item to get Book of Burns in my free to play strategy for the very first item. Alright, so this is another super broken item inside of the game. And in order to get this item, you want to go to Travel Map, Sail East, and do the Kindred Set quest. So I have a video right now that is showing on the screen. I will link the video to the card in the top right corner of the screen also of me doing the quest as a free to play character on my Let's Play AQ account a few years back. So you guys can go ahead and complete this quest as a free to play character like what I did. You don't need any special items it is a lengthy and tedious quest but it is not a difficult quest there are no difficult fights in the quest at all it's just a super lengthy quest it takes you about 45 minutes and once you complete the quest you will unlock the shop which you can buy the armor for so let's go through why this armor is strong or broken okay so the armor here all right what it does is it comes with two skills the first skill it's focus. You can click on it to gain charges every turn. You gain 30 charges every turn uh, with no other, uh, with only the armor itself. If you have other pieces of the set or if you have the pet, then you will be able to gain charges a lot faster. Okay, if you don't have any of the other set items equipped, then you're just gaining 30 charges per turn. If you want to charge up a lot of charges, then definitely equip all the items of the set and bring the pet out as well in order to maximize uh, the number of charges that you can gain per turn and shorten the amount of time that you need for charges. Charging. So similar to Book of Burns, this item has no cap on the number of charges you can store. So you can go up to 100,000 charges if you like and yeah, there's basically no limit. And with the charges, you can use the second skill here called Kindred Strike. So this is basically your nuking skill. Okay, as long as you have 200 charges to pay for it, you can keep on spamming this skill against any monster you like. Okay, while it is not as broken as the first item in some sense because it doesn't give you an unlimited number of turns, but you can spam this new and unlimited number of times, okay, uh, as long as you are alive, alright? So if you have one turn, then you can spam it on one turn, then you can spam it on next turn again if you have enough charges. So with 100,000 charges, you can keep on spamming this new over and over again until the monster is dead. And look here, I have no boosters whatsoever. So just 250 intellect, 250 charisma, 250 dexterity. Look at how much this is doing. Okay, you got a lucky strike right there. 4,600 damage. Okay, assuming there's no lucky strike, so I'll half that damage. It's about 2,300 to 2,500 damage. No boosters whatsoever. That's how crazy this is, guys. Imagine with boosting how much damage this can do. This is one of the skills that can let you hit the damage cap inside the game very easily if you know what you're doing with the boosting and yeah you can just keep spamming this new as long as you have the charges for it that's what really makes it op guys and you can do your charging against combat practice trainer without fear of dying at all and i have used this armor to beat uh gwen's house challenge gauntlet as well so you guys can go ahead and check that out okay so this is meant for basically any build okay you can use this for warrior builds you can use this for mage builds you can use this for ranger builds you can use this for hybrid builds doesn't matter because it doesn't lock your weapons uh damage type okay for mages obviously you want to be using a magic weapon warriors you can use your uh, melee weapon and rangers you can use your range weapon if it's not 100 proc okay don't use 100 proc weapon so 100 proc rangers sorry this is not for you but apart from 100 proc weapons okay any other item uh Ideally, you want to use this with a weapon that doesn't have any proc, so you'll get the nuke every time. Because the weapon special, if it goes off, you'll be doing that instead of your nuke. Alright, so this item, really, really good, very easy to get, just kind of tedious. The H series Tempest Power Armor is a very strong, fully offensive energy armor that is used primarily for warring. So in order to get this armor, you want to go to Warlick's Mage Shop and Battle On, click on Quests, War Between Shadows, and go do the quest once upon a scheme. So once you complete this quest, it's not too terribly long, it's about average length. You will unlock a shop and you can buy the armor. So like I said before, this is used primarily for warring and it's used mainly by warriors. I am not using a warrior build right now, so this is not the armor's full strength. If you are using a full uh, 
maxed out warrior build with 250 strength then obviously this is going to work a lot better i will throw up a clip of me using it in the olympax war so you guys can see just how powerful this armor is and of course i'll throw a link to that video in the card on the top right corner of the screen right now so this armor comes with a built-in initiative bonus which means that you have a much higher chance of going first which is really good for warring on top of that with the recent changes to initiative means that you'll get extra 50 percent damage as well it's also a fully offensive armor meaning you do 25 percent more damage and the best part is its skills here. It's a skill called Overdrive Onslaught. It locks your attacks to melee energy and it also grants celerity if it is not already active. It causes 392 SP per turn and I'll show you guys what this armor can do. Okay, so uh, obviously this is not the full strength of the armor but imagine this. If you're in a war with 100 momentum, fully standard up warrior build a lot of people like to use this with the burden of insight before they build up their momentum and afterwards use it with the savage troll club once they have built up enough momentum this will give you a good chance of basically one shotting just about any monster as long as they are you know uh, not too terribly resistant against energy attacks and this is what makes this armor so fantastic you can go at such a ridiculous speed for warring and this is by far one of the fastest warring methods to date so the first three items have been focused on offense. Now let's talk about something that is broken defensively. The Joe Castellum Ropes is a really strong armor that allows you to cast a shield that reduces the amount of damage that you take and you can stack the shield basically for an infinite number of times. So in order to get this item, you want to go to the Wallix Mage Shop here, click on Mastercraft Sets, go to the Joe Castellum Set and then you want to play the regular quest. So the quest is rather long, but once you finish off the quest, you will unlock a shop that allows you to buy the armor. Now, let's just see how good this armor is and test it out against Combat Practice Trainer. So for this armor, it is a fully defensive armor, as expected. But what's really good is the skill here. Okay, this skill called Castellum Barrier, so it causes 385 SP, and as long as you have enough SP, you can keep on casting it for as many turns as you... For as many times as you like per turn, okay? So I'm going to cast it once. And you can see here, I'm only going to take 83% damage from the monster for the next 4 turns. But, if I cast it again, boom, now it's 67% damage for the next 4 turns. If I cast it again, 51% damage. And if I gain more SP and I cast it again, 35% damage and again just keep stacking this damage reduction until the monster does essentially no damage to me and I can just laugh off whatever damage the monster has. Now the monster is only going to do 3% damage for the next 4 turns. Guys, is this broken or what? Okay, so now, okay, uh, after you reach the bare minimum, it's going to increase the duration of the elemental shield over here so now it's five rounds but i'm taking 10 percent damage so let's cast it again so now it's six rounds but i'm taking 14 percent damage so yeah it will increase the duration the bare minimum that i've seen from this is three percent so you can go damage reduction all the way up to 97 percent guys letting you only take three percent damage each turn that's how crazy this armor is and if you are going up against a strong monster that hits really hard or you know the monster is going to nuke for his sp attack next turn you can go ahead and spam this and yeah basically you'll survive whatever hit is coming your way the haunter and eclipse dragon lords will shields are a set of shields that are mechanically the same but of different elements so the haunted dragon lords will shield is of the wind element whereas the eclipse dragon lords will shield is of the darkness element in order to get these two shields you want to go to wallix mage shop click on mastercraft sets haunted dragon lord set so you want to search the keep over here and for the wind version which is the haunted dragon lords will shield you want to search the inner keep and for the haunted for the Eclipse Dragon Lord's Will Shield, you want to search the Obsidian Roots in order to get it. So once you complete the quest, you will unlock the shop where you can buy the shields for. And what's so great about this shield is that you can basically click on it to give yourself a barrier. So let's showcase the shields right now. And these shields stack with each other. That's right guys, so I'll, I'll showcase this right now. This is the win version. And I can click on it. 372 SP. I'll gain a HP barrier for that turn. And you can see here, it causes an increasing amount of SP in order to click it even more times per turn. So if I can, if I click on it again, hold on, let me gain some SP first. If I click on it again, 
I'll increase the barrier now to 944. If I want to click on it again, it'll cost 560 SP. But wait, there's two of these shields, which means if I switch over to this shield, and I want to click on this, it only costs us 372 SP. That's right, guys. So I can basically stack a ridiculous amount of HP barrier before I even begin the battle. And this will essentially eat up any new. If you pair this with Joe Castle ropes or any of the other OP items that I mentioned here, then you're basically invincible, guys. Not only will you be able to do a lot of damage, but you'll also be able to take a lot of damage. And it doesn't matter what element the damage is, because if you combine the element shield together with the HP barrier, then yeah, your base the enemy is basically never ever going to damage your HP bar at all, and that is just ridiculous. This spell is the backbone of every single build and strategy in the entire game. It doesn't matter what build you are. Hybrid, warrior, mage, ranger, whatever. You need purple rain. Okay, so in order to get this spell, you want to go to Yuga's Inn. Click on Yuga, go to Memorial Shop over here. And you can see here there are different levels of the spell. You need to get the one that's closest to your level. You cannot cheese it and try to save some SP by getting the lowest level version of the spell. Because otherwise, you will not be able to win the roll. So if you're max level, you want to get the level 150 version. Okay, and how you use this spell is, let's go ahead and test this out at Combat Practice Trainer. So at the start of the battle, before you do anything, at least that's how people usually use the spell. You can use it in some other creative ways if you like, like in the middle of the battle, but there's no point in doing that. So most people like use it at the start of the battle, even before you do anything, cast the spell once. And then afterwards, you can go ahead and inflict whatever status effects you want on the monster, on yourself. So you can buff yourself, you can nerf the monster, you know, you can inflict whatever it is that you want to inflict first. So... Uh, let's do that buff, let's gain some celerity, let's go ahead and gain some more SP, and then let's do the Dragon Lord's Will Shield that I showcased earlier, let's spend some of our HP converted to SP, and then we will go ahead and buff ourselves up with the shield again. So you can see here, right now, I have very little HP left after spending all of them, after doing all of those things. Now, what I want to do is cast Purple Rain again. So the first casting records your HP, MP, and SP, as well as the monster's HP, MP, and SP. And on the second casting, it restores it back to that original amount when you first cast it. Okay, so it doesn't matter how much you spend how much you damage the monster, you cast it the second time, it will all be returned back to the point when you first cast the spell. But you get to keep all of your effects, okay, all of the buffs that you've inflicted on yourself, all the nerfs that you've inflicted on the monsters, you get to keep all of that. So this basically means you can cast all of those effects for free, basically free. And what I like to do is, um, you know, play a little bit more conservatively, though I sometimes don't do this, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so you want to save at least about 200 to 300 SP because the roll can fail. And if it fails, then you need to keep trying again and again. So against monsters with slightly higher stats, then you might fail the roll. So yeah, you want to play a bit conservatively because if you can't get this roll uh, off and cast it the second time before the monster gets a turn, then you're basically screwed because chances are you'll be spending all of your resources on, you know, uh, casting all your buffs and your nerfs. Destruction Burst is the best fire and darkness damaging spell in the entire game. So in order to get this item, you want to go to Travel Map, Dragon Spine. And then you want to skip this dialogue with Lord Cyrus and go to part 23, Diamonds and Explosions. So this is not a very long quest. So rather short quest, once you complete the quest, you unlock a shop which allows you to buy the item. And this is obviously meant for mages only. So if you're not a mage, and if you do not have any intellect train, then uh, this spell is not for you. So it's really good because uh, it does the most amount of damage out of all the spells inside of the game. And it compresses two elements in one, fire and darkness. And it elements seek. So it deals uh, either fire or darkness damage based off what ever your foe is weaker to and it does cost a little bit of HP on top of the MP cost as well because of how strong it is but uh, this spell, the fact that you can save a spell slot for one element since it is a compression spell and it also being the most damaging spell in the game makes it really really worth for mages to get this spell. The Essence of Carnage is a ridiculously strong and versatile guest in the form of a summon spell. In order to get this guest, you want to go to Yuga's Inn, go to Lounge, click on Sage Udor, Burning Solstice, 
and then do the greatest warrior part two so once you've done the quest you will unlock a shop which you can use to buy the uh summon spell okay i'll showcase it to you guys so the guest has two modes okay we'll showcase the first mode first that is the defiant mode so in the defiant mode uh this essence of carnage gas causes mp to use and it does two things okay so this mode is mainly for mage and hybrid builds okay so the first effect it does is it boosts your spells by previous hits times percentage damage where previous hits is the total number of weapon based hits that have been made in previous turns so if you hit the enemy five times and then cast a spell the spell will do extra five percent damage so after casting a spell the counter resets to zero if you don't cast a spell you will keep the boost until you cast the spell so you can see here okay it's healing my mp that's the second effect and it's also boosting my de uh, spell damage as well so i you can see uh, I'm just going to keep attacking and it's going to boost my spell damage later on. Alright, so let me go ahead and cast a spell after this and we'll see how much extra booster damage it does. It should show up here, so let's cast Destruction Burst. So you can see uh, now it resets to zero after casting a spell. The second effect is that it heals a portion of all weapon damage dealt as MP at 250 plus Charisma the gas will heal more MP than your damage dealt and the exact specifics of this calculation is currently unknown and it is suspected that the formula is uh, somehow bugged as it is healing a lot more than it should be okay so above 200, at 250 charisma you can see how much it's healing so I'm doing 179 damage it's healing 248 MP that's crazy if I get a lucky strike which I didn't get here but yeah if I get a lucky strike it heals over 600 MP which is absolutely crazy the second mode is the uh, rampant mode and this mode in this mode he causes SP to use so this one it also grants two effects and this is most suited for fully offensive warriors and rangers that do not have access to dunamis, thunder and to backlash builds furthermore this is also a strong choice for fully offensive majors they are using quad force to take advantage of effects normally only available to melee and range but i'll not delve too deeply into that since this is uh this video is mostly targeted at easy to get items so the in this mode the first effect is that he will boost your melee and range attacks by 27%. Spell tech, melee or range skills and spells receive half of this boost. The boost is then modified by charisma. This means that 250 charisma is needed to receive the full effect. Additionally, you can overcap the boost if your charisma is greater than 250, either through the use of other charisma boosting items like the Neko sub race armor, uh, some shields, uh, the charisma drive, or by using the Una Poka spell. Okay, and the second effect, what it does is it applies a backlash status which reflects 58.86% of damage received as harm damage if a save is made, okay, which is your charisma over luck versus the monster's charisma over luck. The backlash amount is then modified by charisma. This means that 250 charisma is needed to full, to receive the full effect, but you can overcap the boost if your charisma is greater than 250, though only to 1.1 potency. Okay, so let's see how much uh, backlash damage is being reflected here. 92 that is pretty good considering that the combat practice trainer is doing like what yeah 50 something damage to us he's you know basically getting this is your free to play way of ba uh, playing backlash inside the game if you don't have the money to buy the you know the doom light z token packages then you can use essence of carnage as a free to play way to play the backlash build and this guess is so so versatile and is definitely a must have regardless of whichever build you're playing Essence Orb, similar to Purple Rain, is the backbone for just about every single build and strategy in the entire game. And it doesn't matter what build you're running, you almost always want to have Essence Orb in your inventory. In order to get Essence Orb, you want to go to Guardian Tower, talk to Nimrod, and you can buy it from the Guardian Shop for gold. So very easy to get item. Oops, not pets. Miscellaneous items, Essence Orb, there we are. So once you get the item, let's go ahead and test this out. So it's essentially a resource conversion item that allows you to convert your HP into SP and this is really good and synergizes very well with Purple Rain. So 99% of the stuff inside of the game, whether it's a nuking skill, whether it's a buffing spell or a nothing spell or status infliction spell, they all cost SP to use and your SP bar is very limited. What this item does is it allows you to use your HP bar as a secondary SP bar. So you can see here, 
I can convert my HP into SP for all of my status infliction effects. And once I'm done, I cast Purple Rain again to heal back all of my HP, and I have all of the status effects casted for free. And 8% of the time, you also get a lucky SP heal, so it heals more SP than usual 8% of the time, and that is really good for helping you to regenerate your resources. Last but not least, we have Shadow Feeder Pendant. This is another super popular item that is used in nuking builds. It is used when you want to give everything on your side of the field an extra turn, and used when you cannot kill the monster in one turn. So this is a very good item that almost every single build wants to have in their inventory. So in order to get this item, you want to go to Travel Map, Sail East, Travel South, view base camp now keep in mind you need to be at least level 100 plus in order to access this area if you are lower level than that then you will not be able to access this area okay so we want to talk to lot barriers a little bit of dialogue here got any quests let's check it out and a little bit more dialogue later you want to do ultimons fortress part 3 so after completing the quest as with all the other items on the list you unlock a shop and you can buy the item from the shop so it's a pretty short quest so it shouldn't take you a long time in order to get this item now let's go ahead and see what this item does all right so the first and base effect of this item is that it causes a little amount of SP to use MP to use each turn, 69 MP to use each turn, okay, in order to heal a bit of your SP each turn. However, this is a worthless effect and is not what the item is good for. Rather, what this item is good for is for its uh, ability to give yourself celerity. Okay, so you can click on it to spend 221 SP and you can give yourself your guests and your pet celerity for one entire turn. And that is really what's so good about it. You can spam click it to get as many turns of celerity as you like. And obviously you want to cast purple rain before you do this and then you don't spam your shadow feeder pendants as many times as you want and then you purple rain everything back to make the uh, so the SP cost essentially free or non-existent. Right, so you can see here now I have three turns of celerity. You don't get all three turns at once, you can only get one extra action per turn. So uh, I get two actions now and then for the next two turns I will get two extra I will get two actions per turn. Alright, so you can see here two actions. And if I have a pet or a guest, they will get an extra action as well, but I don't have them out right now. So yeah, this is a very good item if you are unable to kill the monster in one hit or if you need an extra turn to inflict your status effects. So that's it guys, my top 10 strong but easy to get items inside of Adventure Quest. Let me know what you guys think of the list down in the description below. And as with all lists, this is going to be opinionated. So if you have a different opinion, you think something shouldn't be on the list or you think something should be on the list, then let me know down in the comments below as well. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And if you have found this video helpful, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you guys would like to see more of such future content. Till the next time, I'm your host, Corban Gaming. Peace out.